This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Let's say we have a thousand drinks that all look identical, but some of them have been poisoned. For now, let's say we know that any drink has a 10% chance of being poisoned, and then we'll solve a more generic case later. Now, the question is, in the most efficient way, how could you determine exactly which drinks are the poisoned ones? What you have available to you is a machine where you can input as much or as little liquid as you want, and if any of it has been poisoned, it will display poisoned. If not, it'll say safe. So yes, you can mix drinks. You could put a drop from every single cup in the machine if you wanted, then run the test, but if, or really when, it displays poisoned, that simply means at least one of the drinks is poisoned. Doesn't tell you which one, or how many. So the goal is to find the method that uses the least number of tests on average. Now, the simplest method, and clearly not the one we're looking for, is that we test each drink individually. Thus, it'll take a thousand tests before we know exactly which drinks are the poisoned ones. So now the question is, how can we do better? Well, let's simplify this real quick. If let's say we knew there was only one poison drink, what we could do is then make two groups of 500 drinks and add a bit from every drink in one group to the machine, then run the test. That's one test in total so far. If the result is positive for the poison, then you know the one you're looking for is part of that 500, and from there you could split that group into 250 and 250, then put a drop from every drink in one of those groups in the machine and run a second test. If it's negative, let's say, then the poison drink is part of the other 250, which you can then split again and repeat exactly the same steps. With this method, you'll have your answer in 10 tests, which is quite an improvement from 1,000. The problem is we can't really do this efficiently when we don't know the exact number of poison drinks, but the solution is similar. I decided I'm just going to tell you the exact method with numbers now, and then I'm going to explain how these numbers are found after. So the first thing we're going to do is take the 1,000 drinks and divide them into groups of 4, which means there will be 250 groups in total. We'll then take a sample from each drink in the first group and run a test. And then we'll repeat this for every single group. So that will come out to 250 tests so far, which I'll keep on the screen. Now, some tests, like that first one, will come back as safe. This means we can just discard those because there's no poison in any of them. After that, the last step in this method is to test every drink that remains individually. The question is, on average, how many drinks or groups will remain after discarding the safe ones? Well, any given drink has a 10% chance of being poisoned. That means there's a 90% chance any given drink is safe. With that, we can then multiply all those 90% together, which tells us there's a 65.6% .6 chance all four drinks in a group are safe. That's how many groups are expected to be removed. Thus, 34.4% of the groups will have at least one poison drink. So of the 250 groups in total, 34.4% will remain. Doing that multiplication comes out to 86 groups in total. And 86 groups times 4 drinks per group is 344 individual tests that need to be done. Adding that to the original 250, we get that on average it will take 594 tests before we know exactly which drinks are the poisoned ones. Still a big improvement over a thousand. So that's the answer, but now let's see why we chose groups of four instead of something else, and what to do when we don't know the exact percent chance that a certain drink is poisoned. Basically we're going to do the same thing again, but the generic case with variables rather than specific numbers. Instead of groups of 4, we'll call it groups of n, thus there are 1,000 over n groups, and 1,000 over n tests we have to do at first. Now we, again, have to find how many of these groups will remain after we remove the ones with only safe drinks. We'll say each drink has a p chance of being poisoned instead of 10%, we'll make it more generic, thus the chance a drink is not poisoned is 1 minus p. So for a single group, the chance that all of the drinks are safe is 1 minus p to the n, because we got to multiply that probability by itself n times. These are the groups that are removed, meaning the percentage of groups that remain, where at least one is poisoned, is 1 minus that. Then if we multiply that by the 1,000 over n groups we started with, that tells us how many groups remain to be tested. 
Then multiply that by n drinks per group, and we find the number of individual tests that must be done on top of the 1000 over n. And finally, to put this all together, I'm going to graph this as a function of n so we can see the total number of tests on average that would need to be done. The y-axis represents that total number of tests, while the x-axis is the number of drinks per group in that initial split. And currently p is 10%. Remember, 1000 tests was that worst case scenario of testing every drink individually. But as you can see, by grouping we can do much better. In this case, we see the minimum integer value of n is here at 4,594. And this reflects what we saw earlier, with the 4 drinks per group and the 594 tests. If I change the percent chance of any drink being poisoned to 5%, then the new minimum is here, meaning we should split the 1,000 drinks into groups of 5 at first, and will, on average, do 426 tests. At 20%, this here's the minimum. But you'll notice that as the percentage of drinks that are poisoned goes above 30%, then our technique becomes worse than just checking each drink individually, so this isn't always the best method. But if you at least knew that the percentage of poisoned drinks was less than 20%, let's say, you'll see if we split the drinks into groups of anything between like 2 and 10 at first, the number of tests on average will be less than 1,000. Here's a table of some other percentages and the optimal way to split the 1,000 drinks into groups. Now, some people may think this has no applications, but that isn't the case. Because imagine you have 1,000 blood samples and need to test them for some disease, like HIV. Since the percentage of people who have HIV is much less than 20%, we can use these group testing techniques to minimize the number of tests a machine may need to perform. And yes, this has been applied to healthcare as well as the pharmaceutical industry, for example. What we've seen here is not the only method, but it was one I really liked. Now, there are countless other real-world uses of probability out there, some I've done videos on, but there's even more you can learn over at Brilliant.org, this video's sponsor. One course I would definitely recommend that relates to what we saw here is their Applied Probability course, as this shows you how probability and famous theorems can be used to solve or analyze real-world problems. Examples would include science, similar to what we saw here, quality control, sports, and more. Plus, they discuss misconceptions in regards to probability, which I'm very into because the misuse of probability and statistics actually shows up in the real world and media all the time. Brilliant is a favorite on this channel, and that's because they focus on showing you why you're learning the things they teach and how to apply this knowledge. Plus, I really do like their visualizations and intuitive animations because it's really one of the best ways to learn technical topics. But no matter what you're into learning, they have dozens of other courses in math, science, and engineering to choose from. So if you want to get started right now and support this channel, you can click the link below or go to brilliant.org slash zackstar, and the first 200 people to sign up will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Then with that, I'm going to end that video there. Thanks to my supporters on Patreon, social media links are down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.